we're back again to our Clark to New Clark City Loop community ride. We usually do this every Saturdays and Sundays. It's a platform that we organize for kids and the youth to have a place to maybe hone their racing skills because there are a lot of kids right now that join a lot of winner take all on open public roads and we found it a little bit dangerous for them so this uh, types of uh, community events especially the one that was recently organized by front city mall uh, management was a big boost to have kids have a place have a community that they can uh, say it's very inclusive so they get to hang out with adults they can hang out with seasoned riders like Carlo, with uh, riders from CRZ, with uh, parents, with women. But it's just nice to see young minds being able to uh, uh, mingle with professional adults. We always believe that these are platforms that can help them develop their social skills. Plus, communities like this are a huge platform for parents for moms for homemakers where they don't feel threatened or discriminated because you know in the philippines cycling used to be considered a man's sport but that has changed now there are a lot of women there are a lot of executives there are a lot of coaches like coach melvin over here who have been supporting a lot of community events and what i like about this types of rides is it brings back the nostalgia back in the years when nobody cared what bike you use. Nobody cared what brand you use. Nobody cared what jersey brand you wear. Everyone is just really excited to uh, wake up in the morning, show up at the meeting place, and you just get that chill in your uh, stomach. Butterflies in your stomach when you see a lot of riders gathering together cheering for each other it doesn't really matter if you know their names the common denominator is always just cycling and i remember this vividly back in the 90s back in the 2000s when cycling was at its infancy and i think the covid experience although a little bit traumatic for everyone was a big spark that made people really try out cycling and in this, this, this scene over here, we can see a lot of people from different walks of life, different ages. We want to recreate this uh, experience again. Last week, uh, Benji won the Clark to New Clark City Loop. So one of his major target was to win the CRZ jersey. Uh, another one of our friends over here won uh, Shades. It's just really for fun. These prizes are the ones that are being uh, donated by some of the community members. Jerseys that they don't use anymore. But it's just nice to give... Uh, this kids the sense of dignity instead of just sponsoring them and giving away stuff i always believe that the best thing that you can give a kid is the sense of dignity and we are in a position to show them that if you work hard for something owning it winning it means so much and it teaches them this character development of giving themselves self-respect and i think that has been lost in the past few years where kids are starting to just normalize the idea of asking asking for sponsorship asking for free stuff and we always get emails like that and we always tell them just join us if uh, you do well uh, you do well so this saturday and sunday we did the 77.4 uh, kilometer loop again we start here at uh, the parade grounds um, we use the same roads that everyone uses every weekend, super safe, traffic is really uh, light and this straightaway goes directly all the way to the airport road. The roads are really clean, you can 
rolling at 36, 35 kilometers per hour. We try to keep everyone together uh, by managing the speed. All you gotta do is just show up. You don't really have to do a lot of uh, sprinting or attacking. Uh, These types of rides that traverses the mountains and small hills in New Clark City is an attempt to show the kids that there's a different way of riding instead of just standing up, attacking, burning yourself up and getting too tired. These types of rides that we uh, organize for free is uh, to give them uh, an experiential learning that cycling is not all about brute force. Cycling can be uh, enjoyed with your friends by setting up a manageable speed making sure that everyone's together once we get to the flats we wait for everyone and the format of this ride is um, we ride the entire loop of 77.4 kilometers but the first 60 kilometers is warm-up so the u-turn happens at new clark city all the way to the toll gate so on the left side of this uh, picture over here is the actual route that we use at the uh, 40 kilometer mark is the u-turn the landmark would be the um, toll gate so once you reach the toll gate of the new clark city uh, just make an abrupt u-turn you go back and tackle the climbs again so that's a u-turn 40 kilometers to go and we go back home to uh, the parade grounds once we reach the last four climbs of this loop that's when the uh, game starts that's basically almost about 15 kilometers to the finish line so by that time everyone already had their feel of training everyone had their mileage covered and this is just an option for people who want to just try their fitness level uh, in a very uh, controlled scripted organized manner and the speeds uh, usually increases on the way home and uh, on the left side of the road would always be uh, the racing line so uh, the entire uh, distance is as is once you reach the yellow bridge the pacing begins so once you survive the orange bridge portion it means that uh, you are entering new clark city and this is when we try to keep the group together we do understand that different people have different skill sets when it comes to downhills and uphills so we make it a point that we ride in front to make sure that everyone who was left behind will be brought to the front so on the downhills we take it easy we try to uh, lower the speed just to allow people to catch back up and then the same thing happens when we get to the climb so in total there are eight summit points on this ride and the summit points are usually challenging if you don't plan your effort so sometimes on the downhills we can go freely but the rule is once you reach the bottom you have to wait so there are some downhills they're not very steep they're five percent gradient six percent gradient but sometimes uh, this is where we also test some of the equipment and posture that we promote all about uh, biomechanics the value of aerodynamics the value of free speed how much speed you can gain simply by uh, manipulating the center of gravity of the bike so there are a lot of things that you can uh, do here that's very safe there are no buses there are no tricycles so we highly encourage a lot of people sometimes now it's very often to join us on this rides it's open everyone is invited you don't have to belong to a team you don't have to belong to a club again it's an it's our simple attempt 
to bring community youth together to be able to ride with the uncles with the aunties with the grandpas with the grandmas it's just a beautiful weekend whenever you see people riding together in a single pace line meeting new friends on the road like our friend over here we met them on the road and they were more than welcome to always uh, ride with us so once you get to the bottom of those downhills it's protocol it's a rule that you have to break and just wait for everyone so there's no need to panic if you get left behind on the downhills safety is more important and once everyone catches back up then we start rolling the speed whenever we speed up we try to do it in a very subtle slow acceleration to allow everyone to react and be able to uh, stay on the draft the objective here is not really to drop anyone and show people that you're the strongest it's really more about getting people on the uh, pace line and them be able to enjoy and experience what steady effort is all about and you'll be surprised that you can maintain a decent uh, speed when you keep the group organized uh, very often also this is where we also test what aerodynamics is all about and as you've seen in our previous episodes we are a huge fan and uh, particularly obsessed with uh, posture and aerodynamics and these are the roads where we believe are the best testing grounds to prove theory to reality so we have our handlebars the way you hold the hoods the way you uh, keep the shoulders tight the way you keep the elbows as narrow as possible they allow you to be at speeds that does not increase your heart rate and when you experience this you s get to learn a lot about your bike and about yourself because this uh, courses these routes these types of um, riding style are long enough to give you an idea what is the most effective style of riding you have so in this training camps we always make a distinction between excessive mileage versus efficiency Closing gaps from other riders uh, becomes uh, manageable without having to blow up your heart simply by staying as aerodynamic as possible. Being fast at the same time, even at 40 kilometers per hour and above, you can maintain a very stable, low heart rate. And we have this huge rule about keeping your heart rate low we've heard a lot of uh, news about people uh, having issues with uh, cardiovascular system so this is one of the things that we try to teach on all our camps how to lower your heart rate take care of your cardiovascular system by not exceeding your maximum effort Whenever we get to pass people, we make sure that we uh, invite them to join the pace line. It's always fun to be able to uh, have a lot of people around. So just in case on the next weekend you see us, please join us. Everyone's so always welcome to, to be part of the pace line. If you get dropped, it's okay. We always have uh, a U-turn and we get to slow down a little bit. But uh, I can guarantee you, if you get to experience these types of riding it's always always exhilarating it's something that you get to remember during the weekend the fast pace is such a challenge that you'll notice nobody talks on these types of rides and that's a little bit uh, refreshing because you get to concentrate on uh, the task ahead it makes everyone focus especially when you're this close to the wheel of the rider in front of you um, but it just is 
extremely rewarding when you get to hold a position as long as you can because this is the only way you can really develop posture muscles and the skills to stay at high speed without having to panic so on a side note this is the reason why we design our bikes this is the reason why we create custom geometries to keep the bike balanced that even on high speeds the bike stays steady at the same time most of the bikes that we uh, develop are made to measure because it's the only way based on our experience to have a sustainable posture that you can do the whole day and be excited so on the 24 kilometer mark this is uh, the point when some people turn right but uh, the objective of this uh, baseline group is to uh, finish the whole 74 80 kilometer bike ride so there are a lot of choices here in new clark city there are a lot of corners that you can cut through if you are not into the mileage game but there are also a lot of open spaces if you want to have uh, that extra mile on your leg so it gives the teenagers here in our uh, baseline uh, the youth the uh, opportunity to experience continuous riding at a steady effort so we try our best to stay above 30 kilometers per hour there are several advantages of that one is well you get to get home earlier than usual you also become a little bit more focused and quiet there's less chatter at the back of the group because uh, once you give away a space in between it's really really hard to close the gap you can see from behind Carlo just had a momentary gap and this is something that uh, is very difficult to close so what we want to do is to allow the whole group to catch up back up again so this is 25 kilometers done uh, remember the finish line is 74 kilometers that does not include the walk, cool down and warm up in total the whole ride is around 80 kilometers so once we notice that there's a gap it's just uh, polite to wait for everyone remember it's not our goal to drop our friends it's uh, our goal to keep everyone together but still pose a little bit of a challenge once we get to the 30 kilometer mark this is where some of the false flats come in there are five percent grades six percent grades this is when uh you know your climbing posture come into play how to use your core how to use your other muscles you will discover that the saddle is a, a very active part of the bike it's a rule of thumb that depending on the gradient either you move forward or backward and that's why uh, sometimes the fit of your bike is very important because if if it's not fit you're not going to be able to do a lot of uh, movement on your saddle carlo finally decided to go second wheel and he's very good at following wheels now i mean i've seen the uh, progress of carlo if you've seen the old episodes before he's uh, gone a long way and being able to stay at a very uh, stable steady effort is something that's a little bit challenging for some but uh, if you get to find a group that uh, values keeping the group together and not being a superstar stay in that group it just means that everyone in your community wants to make sure that everyone finishes together <clears throat> to make that happen um, we initiate and make sure that everyone follows the designated speed so for the whole 70 kilometers we try our best Tom and I to uh, swap places so Tom is gonna take charge uh, in a few kilometers just to help me keep the speed up 
I will guarantee that when we get home, we're a little bit uh, tired and fulfilled. But uh, if you notice here, standing up is not really very popular in these types of rides. It's all about keeping a steady posture as long as you can. The way you hold your bike is very important. Carlo does a great job on keeping that fixed posture. His low RPM, being 53 years old, makes it really relevant for him. Again, we're not young anymore. Our golden years have passed. Now we just want to enjoy cycling, but still, we still have that uh, competitive nature on our gut. So uh, sometimes speed is kind of exciting. And the only way we can still go up to these types of uh, speeds is changing our mindset. We no more can no more generate massive amount of wattage. That's already done. We're already on our late 40s. So the only way we can uh, stay at this level is trying to hack our way into uh, college physics. That's aerodynamics, that's posture, that is distribution of effort, plus patience. You gotta be patient. You cannot be overly excited. And those are the main pointers that we always uh, advise our friends, especially the youth, that you have to be really, really patient. Plus, you have to really invest a lot of time on the basic foundation which is technique posture and the ability to understand your limits you have to always understand your limits looking from behind and seeing the long train is encouraging and when you're in front you'll understand that sensation that when you're in front and looking behind and a lot of people depending on you uh, you just keep the you had just have to keep the speed up Tom the juggernaut that he is uh, was very kind enough to uh, take the pace and took the initiative to keep the speed up and it was our objective to get back home as early as we can the speed may look intimidating and fast but i can guarantee you if you stay on the pace line without any acceleration you'll be surprised how manageable and um, easy it is to stay at speeds above 30 kilometers per hour one of the distinctive styles of tom is his low rpm style so at 36 kilometers per hour at 40 kilometers per hour it makes him stable and sometimes it just looks effortless for a man his size remember the map uh, a while ago this is the u-turn this is the 40 kilometer mark that's the uh, toll gate of new clark city so that's where we can consider halfway point and then from here we start going home in anticipation of the last four summits the last four summits are the most challenging so before we get to the base of those four summits we want to make sure that everyone is intact so there's a momentary lull in speed uh, 30 32 kilometers per hour just to make sure that everyone gets back in line and once we uh, realize and understand that everyone is already together that's when we slowly start speeding up so the trick is a steady slow acceleration you will notice on the uh, telemetry that the speed just slowly by increments goes up from 30 32 34 35 it can go up to 40 but you have to do it in a very very slow steady effort Sometimes when you encounter those slight climbs, just like what we're encountering right now, these are 5% grade climbs, usually flyovers, bridges, you don't have to stand up. Just grind your way, stay seated, 
and then on the downhill you don't have to stop pedaling just keep the momentum going and uh, the aerodynamic portion of this ride becomes more and more important that's why during the bike fitting session of every CRZ member posture and holding an aerodynamic silhouette has more value than let's say upgrading your tire or upgrading your saddle or anything else even Tom the massive size that he projects on the wind when he tucks and keeps a compact posture he can easily go at speeds that would normally be uh, challenging and the only way he can do this is because of his bike setup his bike was specifically designed for his posture so because of that he defies physics meaning a lot of people who've seen him ride cannot connect the speed that he produces compared to his size and silhouette you'll be surprised what biomechanics can do to your performance and having a very compact fitted bike will allow you to use a lot of different muscle groups that you never thought existed so even for Tom he can keep chugging along like a freight train even on climbs if he wants to rest all he has to do is just training his elbows once he's ready again he tucks in and even on this uh, slight climbs going up to the bridges uh, he can just keep the pedals going one of the tricks that we learned in aerodynamics is on downhill sections you can have free speed zero speed and still keep the speed up and we only encourage doing this on clear roads so from 47 48 49 50 51 you can see the speed slowly goes up at zero effort and with uh, 50 51 kilometers done we're only 24 kilometers away from the finish line so once we get to this portion we know we only have 24 kilometers to go and uh, it also means that we're so close to the climbs once we reach the climbs that's when uh, yeah, that's when things come alive and this is that portion at the 57 kilometer mark where we start to uh, encounter get closer to the base of the climbs everyone's getting ready everyone who survived the first 50 kilometers are here if uh, you want to stop it's okay but uh, for some of the uh, participants over here they just want to challenge themselves so they stay with the group they stay with the pace we keep the pace steady even at three percent four percent five percent gradient but the trick is to keep the momentum going and even though it's a two percent climb three percent climb if you attack you have to have the uh, discipline not to exceed your limits so we allow attacks like that simply because we can't catch them we don't have the explosivity anymore we don't have the uh, power anymore all we can control is our posture and effort and from this uh, simple climb uh, I think this climbs around 13 15 percent gradient I mean 12 percent gradient you could see how some of the riders showcase their different styles of riding some like it swinging around some like it steady but um, once you've hit your limit do not exceed your limit make sure that you keep it steady and what we do instead is whatever distances that they've uh, gapped we try to close that down on the downhill so once we reach the summit we do a little bit of a 
surrounding check. Yeah, we look behind just to uh, make sure that anyone who got left behind within visual distance can catch up. Once this is clear and we don't see anyone and everyone's already together, then we just keep on rolling. So just like what we mentioned a while ago, we saw a breakaway attempt and the way you can close that at zero wattage is uh, aerodynamics. This is how I try to save a lot of energy instead of pedaling and trying to close that gap and getting tired. Um, there are some, some aerodynamic hacks that you can do safely in control. Remember, we can only do this if your bike is properly set up and fitted to you because the bike stays stable. Even at 75, 76 kilometers per hour, you'll be surprised what a properly built and measured bike can do. So that was John. He was the one who attacked a while ago and you could see how easy it would be if you had the right uh, setup on the bike to catch uh, breakaway attempts. Although this is not uh, guaranteed, but at least when you see attacks like this from Carlo and John, I could have uh, jumped right in and attacked and caught up, but I already know that my heart rate will shoot up my lactic acid would flood my legs and I'm gonna be done so what I do instead is that when I reach the summit and on the downhill part of the climb I try to save a lot of energy again and close the gap simply by being as aerodynamic as possible and you can see the gap over here Carlo and John are literally gone and my only way to catch them is to uh, apply whatever I learned in college physics momentum aerodynamics a lower frontal surface area and the speed is so significantly different that you can close a gap even without pedaling well, I'm exaggerating but you, you get the point so aerodynamic having a very small frontal area gives you a performance boost well, not really your, your performance, but in terms of speed, you can now have the chance to close the gaps. And just like so, I was able to close the gap before the summit of this climb. So to take note, this is the uh, second of the final four summits. So technically, this is the sixth summit finish. There are eight summits. The eighth would be the uh, orange bridge and uh, I just couldn't close the gap with Carlo and John there's no way they're just so lightweight and well trained for these types of uh, elevations and uh, I congratulate them but the only way again I can close that massive gap without having to spend so much energy is uh, aerodynamics keep the weight at the back of the bike as you can see the road is not really smooth it's still cement so I need to have 100% uh, control of the handlebars and um, once you get into a very comfortable position don't just copy this it, this is something that we do on a regular basis you can immediately see the gap that opens up from our friends from behind but also at the same time you can see the gap that closes up once you see them 76 kilometers per hour there are times that we on favorable conditions you can go up to 85 90 kilometers per hour but again you can only do this safely if uh, you have your bike set up properly this is Carlo on a very uh, on a very good day is super super fast on the climb but the only way I can neutralize that gap is uh, yep that's it stay as uh, small as possible on your frontal surface area again I just want to remind people 
don't just copy whatever you see on YouTube there's a huge amount of training and conditioning to make this possible so that's John again another guy that was with uh, Carlo on a breakaway uh, status quo again so we are now getting into the seventh of the eight summit finishes so this is the seventh it's 12% gradient it just bites for some reason I just don't have the legs to stay with this uh, climbers Carlo is just super light that he can just spin that gear together and go with the young guys you gotta understand that Carlo is 53 years old and for him to generate this much torque is unbelievable I mean I've seen him from start to finish when he started with CRZ I've seen his progress happen in front of my eyes it's just amazing it, it just proves that whatever age you're in if you invest on learning you'll go a long way so it's 14% gradient there's no way I can close that gap and again my only chance to close that gap is on the downhill again that's the only way if I try to close this 200 300 meter gap there's no way my heart rate will blow up my legs will be full of lactic acid there's just no way just be patient go to the summit it's coming up in 50 meters and once you get to the summit instead of blowing up and slowing down that's when you close the gap so it's just a clockwork strategy stay steady on the climb if it's beyond your physical level and then use the downhill to be the free speed going up to the final climb so you can see that final climb across the road just beyond that's the eighth and final summit finish before we go to aqua planet which is the finish line of this play bike weekend so with that downhill again again we close the gap to Carlo pass him and the uh, next uh, target would be John at zero wattage there he is again and uh, we'll try to survive this final climb because we want to set up the final ride in aqua planet so once you reach the orange bridge you only have eight kilometers to the finish line eight short kilometers so at 67 kilometer mark this is the start of the climb John being the climber that he is as soon as he sees the rubber band connecting again he tries to snap it did a good job massively impressive I tried to stay as long as I can but the elastic snapped I blew up lesson learned I tried to uh, just let him go he rides away and my only chance against to uh, catch up at the orange bridge the finish line is at the 77.4 kilometer mark and once we reach the bridge it's just uh, a very short nine kilometers to go to the finish line Carlo and Ernest the third guy on the left who is trying his best to win that jersey because his friend Benji already won one of the jerseys kudos to this kid full of heart uh, but Carlo had their own internal game going on and just like so as uh, scripted Carlo accelerates before the summit finish I see Ernest at the back and my uh, job now shifts this kid has been joining our play bike weekends from day one and uh, I think he's been working so hard to win that jersey and we want to help him win that jersey today 
now we reach the uh, approach of Pader. This is still the uh, area of the uh, airport road. But coming into the final 8 short kilometers, this is the most crucial part where everyone has to pay attention. And the only way we can make this happen is to keep the speed as steady as possible. I see a gap in uh, Ernest at the back, so I'll try to communicate with him to stay in front. Don't let a gap go, even if it's a 1%, 2% grade. So this is a really long hole. It's not very steep, but it bites. After riding 70 kilometers, it starts to bite. John is very smart to uh, just stay on the wheel and rest as long as he can because he'll be competing with Ernest. So these two boys over here are on target to win the CRZ jersey today. So this is the second jersey that we will be awarding for the whole season, which means that when you earn the jersey, you're literally part of the... Uh, we don't want to call cycling team but uh, training team and we have our friends from Tarlac who joined us today so they started to uh, stay with us but the uh, most important part of the program is even at 5% 3% gradient you have to keep it as steady as possible you don't want to spike your heart rate you don't want to spike your legs you have to be as steady as possible and recognize that we are approaching Bader. Bader, in the local language, uh, literally means the wall. It's not steep, but at three or four kilometers long, it can really bite. And the slope of that road is around one, two, three percent, goes up to five percent. The attempt of John to accelerate, just let him go. I have to make sure that Carlo is behind me. I have to make sure that Ernest is behind me and uh, we will try to close the gap again with John and um, take charge of the speed because if I let it go here attacks would start happening and the only way you can minimize the attacks is to take charge and this is the reason why when you watch Tour de France a lot of the teams take charge in front to nullify or discourage any attack you want to set up your team leaders to have enough juice on their legs to be able to sprint that final one kilometer so my job at the moment is to bring Carlo and Ernest and John at the one kilometer to go mark it's now 70.7 kilometers and we have 6.7 kilometers at the finish line. My job is to bring them to that point. So we are 5 kilometers away from the finish. 5 short kilometers to the finish. Everyone's gonna get ready. John and Ernest are gearing up. Or a massive sprint hopefully Carlo will be there remember that the finish line is at 77.4 kilometers 77.4 this is now the infamous Bader at 2 3 percent gradient we have to keep the speed as steady as possible this is three kilometers to the finish. At this point of the route, we are now three short kilometers to the finish. And what we're gonna do is to try to drive and drill down the speed as long as we can to discourage any attack from behind. So my job is to bring them with one kilometer to the finish. That would be at the 76 kilometer point. So enjoy the ride, 
I'm gonna leave it from here. Please join us at the finish line and the awarding ceremonies and uh, thank you again for uh, joining us today. Hopefully in the next few weekends we get to uh, invite you. We can meet up at Front City Mall or at the parade grounds in Sidecar. One point four kilometers to finish. One point four kilometers to finish. I'm now in my last four hundred meters to pull, so I need to really rev it up as long as I can before I pull out. From there, it's a thousand meters to go for the sprint, and hopefully, they get to have like a good massive battle. So, two hundred meters to go. I'm gonna pull out give it to them usually our landmark is KCC hotel you can see the infighting going on at the back so there's my uh, queue KCC hotel I pull out here and that's it 1,000 meters to go Third place. Okay, Carlos, third place. Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. NCC loop, Clark NCC that's finish line aqua planet. 6 a.m. And NCC papuntang balik dito. Oh, balik dito. Oh, taas. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> 
Congratulations. Benji, ay kalau si Benji. Benji, Benji dok. Sakti yang size. Lasting, lasting di sana. Sakti yang size. Okay. Alian to X S yang segerado. Okay, our play bike champion. It's your birthday today. You're the one who's going to do it. 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 Coach! 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 Congratulations! You're the one who's going to do it. You're the one who's going to do it. Video pala One, two, three Naalala ko nung bata pa. 12 years old. I think Clark has become part ng pagbabike. So, we really appreciate na yung organizer ng Front City Mall organize this event. Every Saturday, hopefully we can ask the management if we can make this a meetup for the juniors. So, ang marketing manager natin for Clark City Front Mall, si Ms. Eri. So, kaya yung mga bike racks natin dyan, iiwan na natin, di ba? Pwede, so, pwede. Yes, opo. Ilalagay natin yan sa my pick-up coffee. So, anytime, pwede kayo mag-park dyan, mag-chill. So, yun. So, every Saturday, 6 a.m., we meet up here. Yes, pwede. 6 a.m., uh, anyone, especially yung mga juniors. We, ginagawa namin to every Saturday. So, nagsistart kami dito. We follow the bicycle route all the way to Orange Bridge tapos pagdating dito so every Saturday and Sunday 6am anyone can join any bike so good news pasalamatan natin yung marketing head see you all here at Clark City Front Mall next year mas marami na magubukas na tenants thank you very much thank you thank you so much for thank you thank you sir Ian Okay, so we'll see you at uh, Clark City Front Wall every Saturday and Sunday. We have our uh, marketing head. So they gave us uh, they gave us uh, the opportunity to stay here every Saturday and Sunday, 6 a.m. Uh, we'll be riding around uh, Clark. Sports tourism is real. What can you say, man? Um, thank you for joining the bike fest here at Clark City. We are looking forward for me to so mga kids, ah, mga boys, we're gonna be uh, meeting here every Saturday. Tommy Natang is here, Boots is here, Carlo is here, so I will be seeing you. Okay? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Watch here. Come. Every week, though. Every week, every week. Come, stay here, stay here. Okay. Where is that? Boots. Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Where's the mic? Okay, so thank you very congratulations to everyone for joining for today's early morning. I think uh, cycle tourism is real, and we want to appreciate everyone, especially Clark City Front Mall, for supporting the local cycling community. I think cycling is very lively nowadays, especially during the lockdown. I think. Uh, now is the right time to stay healthy. So we now have, I'm very happy to announce to everyone, uh, well, we get the green light that uh, the Front City Ball will be supporting our local cyclists as safe haven. Every morning, I think everyone's very secure over here. It's my first time to be in the mall. Wow. It's so impressive. So I think we're going to be visiting some of the sites over here. We usually go to uh, some other places, but I think it's more accessible to everyone. And it's accessible by bike because they have bike racks, right? Exactly. So we can come over here by bike after riding. We can have coffee at uh, Cape of Hope Coffee. And uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Ian. Ayan, let's take a picture. Okay, let's take a photo together.
Thank you very much for organizing the event. Uh, I think you're the one who built the bike racks, right? Yes. Okay, so every Saturday? Every Saturday? Every Saturday. Every Sunday. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. It's here at uh, Front City Mall. So it's uh, super safe. We got our security guards over here. That, those are the bike racks and then uh, yeah, thank you very much for the management. Thank you, sir. My name is Leon Cruz. I'm from the Philippines. I represent CRZ Philippines, Malaysia and Singapore. And this is my 34th year cycling. If you are in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, we have our biomechanics design studio here in Denai Alam, the uh, Max Bikes. And you can find us easily on the map. We're very close to central Kuala Lumpur. This is where we invite our guests to attend our biomechanics workshops. We have seminars, talks. You can ask anything, everything, how we design our bikes, how we design on the geometry, how each measurement influences your type of riding, and how a custom made-to-measure bike could ultimately be the final solution to your um, chronic problems. So a part of the program that we uh, organize here is you get to uh, experience firsthand how a mock-up of your bike design would feel like even before the bike arrives because we want to guarantee that this would be a worthwhile investment for you. Um, please join us. I'm sure we're gonna have a great time. We're gonna meet more friends. We're gonna meet new faces and I really love that cycling is one of those things that bring people closer together. Cyclotourism is real, let's support it. Now I gotta check out which bike I'm gonna use but I'm gonna use my winning bike from last year so we're gonna be using this this year and uh, <clears throat> okay we're gonna be off! <laughs> <laughs>